Everybody loves penguins. They're amazing birds. They're not quite like any bird you've seen in your backyard or in the park. They're birds that don't fly. They're flightless. While other birds have wings for flying, penguins have flippers to help them swim in the water. They spend half their time on land and half in the ocean. They're highly suitable for the marine environment. They're excellent swimmers and can dive to great depths to search for food, some to over 300 meters. Their shape and design enable extreme agility underwater. The feet and tail act as a rudder, while the flippers act as propellers. They also have a waterproof coat of short, overlapping feathers and a well-developed layer of fat for insulation. There are 18 species of penguins, and all of them, with just one exception, are found in the Southern Hemisphere. Some of them are especially fascinating. King penguins are the second largest species, measuring up to one metre tall. They're eye-catching, with a vivid splash of orangey-yellow markings to contrast the black and white. King penguins incubate their eggs on their feet. Once the chicks are big enough, they form creches that include many thousands of chicks. At this stage, chicks wear a thick coat of brown down. King penguins are great communicators. When they return from a foraging trip at sea, they can find and identify their chicks in a crowd of 50,000 young penguins just by listening to their voices. Gen 2 penguins are easily recognisable with their orange bill, white eye patches, peachy pink feet and a long fan tail that sways when they waddle. They're easy to hear too with a loud trumpeting honk. At sea, Gentoos are known for their speed. They are the fastest of all penguins in the water, reaching up to 36 kilometers per hour. Gentoos are social breeders, building their pebble nests in colonies. Pebbles are a Gentoo's prized possession. With the right stone, a male can woo a female. And because of this, Stones are intensely guarded and the subject of many neighbourly disputes. Couples are monogamous and infidelity is a big no-no, with cheating penguins being punished with exile from the colony. Rockhopper penguins are named after their habit of leaping across rocky terrain. They're one of the more athletic penguin species on land but they're still more at home in the water. And they're well known for their spiky hairdos. Macaroni penguins are famous for their extravagant yellow plumes. Their distinctive golden crest and bright plumage led to the name Macaroni, which refers to a man with flamboyant fashion sense. Chinstrap penguins are named for the narrow black band under their heads which extends from ear to ear, just below the chin and cheeks. They're found mainly on the Antarctic Peninsula and on islands in the South Atlantic Ocean. Which brings us now to one of the most fascinating and loved of all the different kinds of penguins and a long way from the chin straps in Antarctica. Only along the shores of Southern Australia and New Zealand can you find the rare and wonderful sight, the smallest penguins in the world? Fairy penguins, also known as little penguins. Now, to give you an idea of their size, this tiny penguin is only 30 to 40 centimetres tall, just a little more than the length of the ruler you used at school, and weighs just one kilogram. That's the weight of a one litre bottle of water or a pack of six small apples. These little penguins are the only penguins in the world that don't wear the traditional black and white suits. Their coat is of dark blue feathers and their bellies are white. These charming little penguins 
spend about 80% of their time at sea, swimming and foraging for food. During the breeding season, they return to their nesting burrows on land. Here they mate, raise their chicks, molt, and take a break from their months at sea. All adult penguins molt at the end of the breeding season from February to April. All their feathers are shed and replaced over a period of two or three weeks. During the molt, the new feathers aren't waterproof and so the birds need to stay on land. The nightly ritual of penguins coming ashore enchants thousands of people who flock to the coastline to watch these small seabirds surfing like a torpedo in on the waves and then they waddle up the beach to sleep in their burrows. But people aren't the only ones who eagerly watch for the arrival of the little penguins. One fierce introduced predator wades or swims to the islands where the penguins live and can decimate an entire colony very quickly. Join me as we follow the dramatic story of a colony of little penguins that was dangerously threatened with extinction and the unlikely hero who saved them. This heartwarming story carries a special message for us today. It'll inspire you and encourage you. Warrnambool is a lovely town on the southwestern coast of Victoria, 260 kilometres from Melbourne, at the end of the scenic Great Ocean Road. This iconic road was built by the returned World War I soldiers between 1919 and 1932, and passes some of Australia's most dramatic and iconic coastline, including the magnificent Twelve Apostles. The first documented European exploration of the Warrnambool area was by Lieutenant James Grant, a Scottish explorer who sailed the Lady Nelson along the coast in December 1800. Next came the English navigator Matthew Flinders in The Investigator and the French explorer Nicholas Borden, who both sailed past Warrnambool in 1802, charting the coastline of Australia. Today, Warrnambool is home to another type of quest, the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic on the Australia Day long weekend in January. It's a 40 lap race on a dirt track, which attracts over 100 Australian and international drivers. The city is also known as the finishing point of the Melbourne to Warrnambool Classic Cycle Race. It's the longest one day bicycle endurance race in the world and has been held every October since 1895. This area was also frequented by whalers early in the 19th century. They hunted the whales almost to the point of extinction. But since whaling was outlawed in 1935, the numbers of whales have been steadily increasing. Southern right whales are a variety of baleen whale that has plates in its mouth to sieve its food rather than teeth. They are some of the largest mammals on earth and approximately 10,000 southern right whales live in the subantarctic waters of this southern ocean. These whales grow to a length of 18 meters and weigh up to 23,000 kilos. They have enormous heads and are black, dark brown or blue in colour. Tourists flock to watch these captivating whales breaching and swimming in these waters. In winter, the whales migrate to warmer waters around the southern areas of Australia. And almost every year between June and September, female southern right whales return to the waters of Warrnambool's Logan Beach to carve. The females migrate to the nursery areas close to the shore to bear their calves, while the males, yearlings and young adults remain further out to sea. The whales often swim within 100 metres of the shore, 
They can be viewed from a specially constructed platform in the sand dunes or from the beach. But there's another story in Warrnambool that's happened in Stingray Bay, and it starts on Middle Island, a small rocky windswept outcrop lying very close to the shore where the first fully manned lighthouse station was built in 1855. There's a narrow channel between the foreshore and the island, and for as long as people can remember, a colony of little penguins nested and thrived in this rocky, uninhabited haven. Little blue penguins are great swimmers and look as though they are flying through the water. As they come closer to land, they surf in and project themselves up onto the land like a small torpedo, usually landing on their feet. Once they land, they waddle from side to side with their heads down, jumping over rocks as they search for their burrow. They usually follow the same path to their burrow or nesting boxes each night. And at Middle Island, they have created worn paths into the soft sandstone. The little penguins once bred in many places along the Southern Australian coastline, but introduced predators, rats, dogs, cats and foxes preyed on the penguins and soon destroyed many of their colonies and their habitats. A Deakin University study of the 1999-2000 breeding season on Middle Island found 292 occupied burrows and 502 penguins were coming ashore during a one-hour period in January 2000. It was believed that there were about 800 penguins nesting on the island. The study also suggested that tourism was having a negative impact on the penguins and raised concern over the threat posed to the colony by foxes and wild dogs. It was about the same time during the year 2000, the natural water currents in the channel led to an increased sand buildup and provided access to the island during low tide. Suddenly, the fox threat became a reality because now at low tide, you could walk across from the mainland to the island, a distance of only 20 to 30 metres, without barely getting wet. This meant that the hundreds of little penguins were now at risk and in serious danger. Soon, the foxes found that during low tide, they could cross to the island for a penguin dinner. Now, foxes are known to be thrill killers. They kill anything they find, even though they don't need it for food. Within five years, the penguin population had decreased. And in 2005, the Penguin Preservation Project did a survey and found that 360 penguins had been killed by the foxes in just two nights. The penguin colony was being decimated by the foxes. There were now fewer than 10 breeding pairs on the island. Something had to be done to save the penguins. In 2006, the Penguin Preservation Project closed Middle Island to the public to protect the penguin burrows, chicks and eggs from human trampling. But it wasn't enough. Foxes and other predators were still reaching the island. The penguins on Middle Island were going to be wiped out unless a solution could be found. And then the unlikeliest concept was suggested. A chicken farmer by the name of Swampy Marsh came up with a plan. Swampy Marsh had successfully used his dogs as shepherds to protect his free-range chickens from the foxes. The dogs had zealously guarded the chickens and protected them from danger. They were dedicated and successful shepherds. So he suggested he could try sending his dogs over to the island as guardians to protect the little penguins from the foxes. But they weren't just any breed of dog. They were Maremma dogs. Now, the Maremma Sheepdog is an Italian breed of sheep guarding dog native to the mountains of Tuscany. These dogs are known for their thick white coats, 
fluffy tails and their fearlessness in defending and protecting their flock from wolves. In a world first, Marema dogs were trained to protect penguins rather than chickens or sheep. They were placed on Middle Island to protect the penguins from foxes during the breeding season. The first of several dogs to be used on Middle Island was called Oddball, and he made quite an impact. A volunteer group was counting, doing penguin counting and stuff like that. And over a period of a couple of weeks, they found over 360 dead mutton birds who also live on the island and penguins on the island. So they spoke amongst each other. They tried baiting, they tried shooting, they tried fencing some areas off there, they just none that worked. And one of the volunteers suggested to um, Swampy Marsh, a local free range egg farmer, and Swampy's just flippantly said, all they need is a couple of maramas out there, they're just chooks in dinner suits and they'll take care of the whole problem. And that's when they took um, Oddball out there, the first dog to go out there, the first time a marama dog had been used to look after a native species. And from Oddball's first night on the island, the fox's tracks and the killing of the birds stopped immediately. The project was a huge success. The shepherd dogs stay on the island during the breeding season from October to March. It's as if they take on the responsibility for the care and well-being of the penguins. They're prepared to commit everything to protect the penguins. Amazingly, since Oddball and his four-legged successors were introduced, there was a steady increase in the penguin colony size. By 2013, there was an estimated 180 penguins, and by 2016, the population had reached over 200 and there was no evidence of a fox attack on a single penguin on Middle Island through to 2017 when the dog stood on guard. But then disaster struck the colony. Due to high tides and bad weather, no maremmas were taken to the island. The colony had no shepherd. And without the dogs on patrol, the foxes came to the island and went on a killing spree. In a single night, at least 70 penguins died. The preservation project immediately returned the Maremmas to the island, and they have been successfully protecting the little penguins ever since. The shepherd makes all the difference. Today, Middle Island is a wildlife sanctuary that is home to breeding colonies of little blue penguins and short-tailed shearwaters. It's captured the interest of the world and provided a huge boost for tourism in the area. During the summer months, you can visit Middle Island on the Meet the Marema tours and experience the project firsthand. The Marema ambassador dogs also spend time at Flagstaff Hill Maritime Village interacting with visitors and helping to educate people about environmental conservation. Middle Island is part of the Merry Marine Sanctuary. A dedicated group of volunteers assist in managing the features of this beautiful area. This innovative project is widely recognised as a world first and has received a number of awards. Over 6,000 volunteer hours have been contributed to the project in activities such as penguin monitoring, care and training of marema dogs, building of infrastructure on the island, and fox control. In 2014, this heartwarming story was made into a movie called Oddball and enjoyed by people all over the world. The storyline is based on the true story of the Middle Island Conservation Project and focuses on one of the original Marema shepherd dogs who protects the penguin colony and saves them from extinction. The movie is funny and touching and loving. In fact, the whole movie is basically about love, standing guard, protecting the needy and vulnerable. It's a reminder of the importance of having a good shepherd to protect the colony from danger. And the penguins aren't the only ones that need protection. We do too. In a sense, 
We all need a good shepherd as we face the challenges of life in the real world. Because there are times when we all feel unprotected and exposed to the elements of life. Financial struggles, marital difficulties, unfair treatment, employment problems. We need a good shepherd. And here's the good news. We've got one. Listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 10 and verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus promises to be our shepherd, our protector. He's reminding us of the words of the shepherd's psalm. The opening line is the most famous line in all the psalms. This greatly loved song is extremely powerful in its simplicity. Here's what it says in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Isn't that reassuring? It's so comforting to know that the Good Shepherd will lead, guide and protect us. No matter where we may be stranded in life, He will lead us to a better place. No matter what predators may be lurking, He will protect us and lead us to a safe place. But there's more in Psalm 23. Listen as we continue. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Perhaps you are going through the valley of the shadow right now. Maybe the valley of the shadow of death. It may be the valley of the shadow of depression. It may be the valley of the shadow of discouragement. It may be the valley of the shadow of debt or conflict. Shadows can be scary. Remember being afraid of shadows when you were lying in bed as a child? But I've learned a few things about shadows. First, shadows can't hurt you. And second, shadows are always bigger than the source and sometimes than reality. And here's the good news. Wherever there's a shadow, there has to be a light. You can't have a shadow without a light. So the key when you're going through the valley of the shadow is to turn your back on the shadow and look at the light. Because as long as you keep your eyes on the light, Jesus, the light of the world, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the shadows won't scare you. That's how you get through the valleys. Jesus promises that even in your darkest valleys, He's there walking beside you. Just look at Him, don't be afraid. And remember this as well, shepherds always carried a rod and a staff to protect their sheep. And in the same way, God has all that's necessary to protect you and care for you. So yes, you can trust Him even in the darkest valleys. Here's how the shepherd's psalm ends. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's protection and His reward lasts forever. The secret is knowing the shepherd, which reminds me of a famous Shakespeare actor who was the guest of honour at a social gathering where he received many requests to recite favourite parts from various literary works. An elderly retired pastor in the crowd asked the actor to recite Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. The actor agreed on the condition that the preacher would also recite it. Well, the actor's recitation was expertly presented with great dramatic emphasis and the crowd gave him loud and lengthy applause. Then it was the old preacher's turn. His voice was rough and broken from many years of preaching 
and his diction was anything but polished. But when he finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. When someone asked the actor what made the difference, he replied, I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. If you would like to know the shepherd better and experience the inner peace and happiness that Jesus offers, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our incredible journey viewers today. It's the easy to read booklet, Psalm 23, The Shepherd's Psalm. This small booklet will provide more detail on this much loved psalm. This booklet is our gift to you and is absolutely free. I guarantee there are no hidden costs or obligations whatsoever. So make sure you take this wonderful opportunity to receive the free gift we have for you today. Phone or text us at 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website tij.tv to request today's free offer and we'll send it to you totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia, or PO Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. If you've enjoyed our journey to Warrnambool and Middle Island to see the little penguins and our reflections on the Good Shepherd, and the protection that Jesus offers us, then be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together. Until then, may God keep you safe and give you peace. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we all experience dark valleys and challenges in our lives, and we pray that you will protect us and lead us and guide us. We thank you for drawing near to us and for being our shepherd today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.